Translocation is the movement of organic molecules like sucrose and amino acids through the phloem. Now these molecules travel through the phloem over large distances from source to sink. Well, how do they get in the phloem in the first place? And what is the evidence for this? Well, in A-level biology, you need to know these things. So I'm gonna help you get the best grades possible in your exams, so stay tuned. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you find some value in the content, guys. So this video was requested by one of my students, and I'm really pleased with it, actually. I think this is gonna help you master the translocation of sucrose and get the grades you need. If it does help you, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, guys, as always. So, some key terms first of all then. Well, number one, translocation is the movement of solutes such as sucrose and amino acids in plants. Solutes are substances dissolved in a solvent, for example, sucrose or glucose or sodium chloride. Active transport is the movement of substances against the concentration gradient using ATP and a carrier protein. Facilitated diffusion is the movement of a substance down its concentration gradient through a channel or carrier protein. Now, facilitated diffusion is a passive process. The phloem, next of all, is a vessel that transports sugars in plants, and it's made of living hollow cells, which is really cool. Sieve tube elements, they're the hollow living cells that form the phloem, and they have a sieve plate at either end of it, which is like a perforated end of the cell with holes in it so the sugar can pass through. Companion cells provide ATP for active transport. The source is where the sugar is produced, so that's typically the photosynthesizing palisade cells in the leaves. The sink is where the sugar is transported to, so that could be respiring tissues like roots, or it could be a store of polysaccharides like a tuber in plants. And if you're wondering what a tuber is, a potato or a carrot, there's some key examples of tubers. Organic molecules are molecules that contain carbon. So a classic one you need to know for AQA A-level biology is glucose, but also sucrose and amino acids. So the phloem next of all, now this is the structure on the right hand side. You can see it's made of these hollow cells and each of these individual cells are called sieve tube elements, okay? And they do have a cell membrane and cell wall, but they have reduced organelles and they have this hollow space in the middle so sucrose can be transported through them. And at either end of them, they have these sieve plates that you can see there. Now we've also got the companion cells and we've got the source cell, such as a palisade cell in the leaf. So first of all, the phloem transports solutes like sucrose and amino acids from source to sink. This is called translocation. Trans meaning to change, location meaning area. Sieve tube elements are living cells that are specialized for transport. They are hollow and lack a nucleus. Companion cells have many mitochondria to provide energy for active transport. I highly recommend you draw this diagram, guys, because it'll help you in the exam if you know its structure. So translocation, next of all. Well, this is where sucrose is moved from source to sink. Energy from ATP is required to load solutes into the phloem. So when we transport the sucrose into the phloem, we call that loading. Sucrose moves down its concentration gradient from source to sink and is broken down by enzymes or converted into starch at the sink. Now the sink could be growing roots or a, a tuber such as a potato. So this region is what we're going to focus in on next. Okay, so I would recommend drawing your source cell, your companion cell and your sieve tube element because we're going to go into some technical detail of how sucrose is loaded into the phloem. So we've got our sugar producing cell on the right hand side here. Now remember, I said that could be a palisade cell, which will be packed full of chloroplasts and chlorophyll and all that good stuff we need to make sugar via the process of photosynthesis. So firstly, there'll be facilitated diffusion of sucrose from photosynthesizing cells into companion cells. And these here, these are gonna be transmembrane proteins that will allow the transport of sucrose. Next of all, Hydrogen ions are actively transported out of companion cells, establishing a gradient. So we can see that here. 
We've got our carrier protein here because watch my video on active transport, guys. The carrier protein is the only type of protein involved in active transport. And we can see our ATP is being hydrolyzed to ADP plus inorganic phosphate. And these gray protons, these hydrogen ions, are getting transported across the com from out of the companion cell into the, the cell walls and tissue around it. Next of all, the co-transport of sucrose will occur. Now link this to your knowledge of the co-transport of glucose in digestion. So the co-transport of sucrose through a carrier protein, and this is a special type of carrier protein called a co-transport protein. Now sucrose is going to move against its concentration gradient. So remember the sucrose is the pink dot, and there's less pink dots per unit area in this bit, this region here, and there's more in the companion cell suite. So going against the concentration gradient, but it's not using ATP here because the hydrogen ions, the gray dots, are moving down the concentration gradient. So they're bringing the sucrose with them, okay? And that's the idea behind co-transport, that it doesn't directly use ATP because one molecule like an ion is moving down the concentration gradient, bringing a sugar like sucrose against the concentration gradient. So that's represented here. So guys, students often get this process confused. So make sure you've got a lovely diagram of this. I've looked at a number of sources to make this simple and clear for you, okay? Now, when we've got the sucrose in the companion cell, that can just move into the phloem via diffusion, okay? Because there's plasma desmata, which are gaps in the cell wall, pores that connect different plant cells together. So the sucrose will just diffuse straight into the phloem, no problem there, down a concentration gradient. Okay, let's look at mass flow theory next of all. Well, active transport is where the solutes are actively loaded from companion cells into the phloem. Now that just condenses that entire process we looked at before. So it does use energy because the hydrogen ions needed active transport. So overall, this is an active process to get the sucrose from the companion cell into the phloem. Now number two, the water potential of the phloem is now lowered and water will move in from the xylem via osmosis because if we've got a low water potential at the top of the phloem here, the xylem will have a relatively higher water potential and water will go into the phloem across the cell membranes via osmosis. Now this will increase the hydrostatic pressure at the top of the phloem because we've pumped in a load of sugar, we've pumped in a load of water, so we're gonna have a pressure gradient going from the top of the phloem to the bottom. Now solutes are unloaded at the sink, such as respiring roots or tubers, and that's going to increase the water potential of the phloem at the bottom because there's not as much sugar in them or amino acids or whatever the particular solute is, but we'll focus on sucrose for now. So because the bottom of the phloem has a higher water potential than the bottom of the xylem, water will move back into the xylem via the process of osmosis. Now the pressure gradient moves solutes from the source where they're made to the sink where they're used. Now they'll be used in respiration to produce ATP or they can be stored as starch because if you form glycosidic bonds between monosaccharides, you can build up large polysaccharides like starch. So this is a larger version of the image I just showed you and we can see water going into the phloem at the top and leaving the phloem at the bottom. So the evidence for mass flow theory next of all well, first of all, ringing experiments. If a ring of bark is taken from a tree, the tissue above it will expand. Also, fluid from the expanded area has a greater concentration of sugars than the area below. And this gives some strong evidence for the mass flow of sugars from source to sink. Now you can see in this diagram here, this is of a woody stem. You can see the phloems on the outside and the xylem's on the inside. So if we take a ring of bark away, we'll be removing the phloem, but leaving the xylem behind. So because the phloem's gone from a region, all the sugar will accumulate above where the phloem is missing. So number two, aphids feed on sap by piercing the phloem using sharp mouth parts. Now this is a bit gruesome, and you're definitely not gonna get your CPAC for safe and ethical treatment of animals doing this, but this is an experiment you need to be aware of for the exam. Scientists can remove the body of aphids, leaving the mouth part behind, causing sucrose, or sap, 
to leak out. Now sap flows out faster near the source than the sink, and that's further evidence of the mass flow theory. Companion cells, next of all, have high numbers of mitochondria. And fourth, if an inhibitor that prevents ATP synthesis is added to the phloem, translocation is inhibited, and that's going to prove evidence for active transport in translocation. And finally, downward flow in the phloem occurs only when light is present. And we know we need light to make sugar, and we need light to synthesize ATP, because without sugar, we can't make ATP. Radioactive traces. So carbon-14, which is an isotope of carbon, can be supplied to leaves in the form of radioactive carbon dioxide. During photosynthesis, this carbon dioxide will be used by the plant to synthesize sugars. If you want to know more about that, check out my video on the light-independent reaction. Now, autoradiography can then be used to see where the carbon-14 has traveled by looking at thin cross-sections of the stem in different locations. So you can take a slice at the top, the middle, the bottom, at regular intervals, wherever you want to. Now the cross sections are placed on X-ray film, which is blackened by the radiation from the carbon-14. And the findings will be that only the phloem causes blackened regions of film, so only the phloem transports sugars, because only the phloem will contain that carbon-14 that's added to the sucrose in photosynthesis. So, some evidence against mass flow theory that you need to be aware of next of all. Well, number one, not all solutes move at the same speed. Sucrose is not delivered more quickly to regions with the lowest concentrations of sucrose, and mass flow would predict sugar would travel to the sink with the highest water potential, and this just isn't the case. Number three, sieve plate function is relatively unknown, so those regions of the phloem that have the holes within them, those perforated regions, I mean, that would surely increase the hydrostatic pressure needed to move fluid through it. It would cause resistance. So that kind of goes counter to the mass flow theory. Now, let's do some exam practice, guys. So question one, describe how a high pressure is produced at the top of the phloem. And this is worth three marks. Pause the video, have a go at the question, Let's check out the answer. So, one mark for saying sugar enters the phloem, lowering the water potential. A second mark for saying water enters the phloem from the xylem via osmosis. And a third mark for saying the increased volume of water leads to a greater hydrostatic pressure. So that's three marks to describe how a high hydrostatic pressure is produced. Question two. How can scientists determine which tissues in a plant contain radioactive sucrose when investigating the mass flow hypothesis? Pause the video and the answer. Cut a thin section of plant stem or plant tissue for one mark and then use autoradiography or place against photographic film in the dark for your second mark. So guys, that's all we've got time for today. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe if this video provided you some value. Drop in the comments, what are you revising? What do you struggle with? What do you need me to help you with? And I will get back to you guys. Take care and I will see you in the next one.